Hola, buenos días a todos y muchas gracias por invitarme. Hi, good afternoon and thank you so much for inviting me to this such interesting forum. This is a very important initiative and a successful one, I may say. For me, it's a true pleasure and honor to address you and to explain to you aspects relating to joint health and cardiovascular health. Actually, by the end of this presentation, I would like you to see that there's a clear relationship, a reciprocal relationship between the joints and the cardiovascular organs. You can see that osteoarthritis is a very frequent pathology affecting almost 30% of the population. And I would like to notice, I would like you to notice this. Women would be depicted in orange. So as we grow older, the proportion of patients with OA increases. And after the age of 60, there's practically double the number of women than there is of men. More and more women in relation to men. And as for cardiovascular diseases, this is cause number one for death worldwide, especially in the most developed countries. In Europe, there are four million people dying every year because of a cardiovascular disease, basically myocardial infraction or stroke. 45% of patients, men and women, will die due to a cardiovascular disease. Other causes can be cancer and then all the rest. How important this is that although it's true that almost 2.6 million patients will die over the age of 65, 700,000 patients each year will die because of a cardiovascular disease and are under the age of 65. I believe it's important to highlight that the joint should be considered as an organ, the same way that uh, the heart is deemed an organ, because it has vessels, arteries, coronary arteries, valves, the atrium, the specific conductive tissue. So in the same way, joints are an organ, because they have different structures, such as the synovial membrane, the cartilage, and the subchondral bone. So when this becomes diseased because there's an inflammation in the cartilage or cartilage destruction or, bo or subchondral bone affection or membrane affectation, there can be synovid synovitis, cartilage defects or subchondral bone remodeling. And this can lead to a series of lesions that could even affect the tendons, the cartilages, the membrane, the synovial membrane with the hypertrophia. That could also lead to problems with the muscles around the joint. That's why these muscles should be strong, stable, more energetic. And here you can see what the problem is with the destruction inflammation and degradation of structures in the joint. It is also important to consider that both diabetes, cardiovascular disease and osteoarthritis, OA, is osteoarthritis, which is the name in, in English, but in Spanish we call it artrosis. So osteoarthritis, cardiovascular disease and diabetes share a series of risk factors that are common. These three share age as we grow older, obesity, inflammation, and lack of activity. These four situations promote cardiovascular disease, diabetes, and osteoarthritis. It is true that some are more specific to, arthrit to osteoarthritis, such as female gender or physical overload, but the three will have this correlation. In addition, we know that there are several mechanisms involved that affect the two organs in the same way, that is the joint and the heart, such as, in addition to obesity, lack of activity and age, inflammation, especially 
degradative enzymes, inflammatory uh, uh, cytokines, metalloproteins, IL, necrosis alpha, TNF, there are a series of substances that are related to the inflammation that are present in both patients with osteoarthritis and patients with cardiovascular disease, such as ischemic cardiopathy, which is the blockage of the coronary arteries due to the deposit of cholesterol therein. Some other factors, such as increasing the endotelin or the increase in the endothelial growth factor. As a matter of fact, even for patients with a high degree of cholesterol, it could be that membrane-wise, on the synovial liquid, you might detect some chains, some that, such as palmitic acid, that may decay the cartilage in the joint, as well as oxidative stress. It's also good to know that patients with OA, and these are the most affected joints in the backbone, the hips, the knees, and toes and fingers. Well, these OA patients have a greater risk of uh, cardiovascular risk. They have a greater risk of diabetes, high blood pressure, obesity, dyslipemia. And as a matter of fact, close to 70% of patients with OA at least have one risk factor for a cardiovascular disease, a CVD, which makes that roughly OA patients will have a 25% increased risk of having a CVD than individuals of the same age and weight with no OA. Therefore, osteoarthritis is related to a greater risk of a myocardial infarction or cardiac insufficiency. So, OA is a facilitator to greater cardiovascular risk and a 25% um, greater risk of having a CVD. But furthermore, oddly enough, patients with OA patients and a cardiovascular disease the OA B performs worse. So when you compare patients with a CVD, you see that the osteoarthritis in these patients will have a poorer prognosis with more time to recover from pain, with uh, less probabilities on recovering their symptoms, and with less probabilities of recovering back their joint motions. The same when you compare this with diabetic patients. Diabetic patients with OA, you see that fare worse. They are behaving worse. So the CVD, the cardiovascular disease, has an impact on the development of osteoarthritis. So you see how one has an impact on the other and how they share similar mechanisms. As a matter of fact, we know that if we manage to have people lose weight or if we have physical exercise, this will just improve on the prognosis both of OA and CVD. And I like this slide because this is a proposal brought by the American Cardiological Society on the eight things we should be doing, whether with OA or not, in order to prevent a CVD. And the first thing would be proper sleeping between seven to nine daily hours with no mobile phone close to our night desk, healthy food, proper eating with, without resorting to ultra-processed food, watching for sugared beverages and with a high content on non-natural ingredients, with a higher ratio of fruits and vegetables, and to prevent the use of sugared beverages. Then, physical exercise accordingly should be 150 minutes of moderate exercise per week, which would be roughly some 30 daily minutes. Then you could go swimming, walking, hiking, and also some isotonic 
edges sizes. You could also count the steps you do on a day, and it's like between eight to 10,000 steps a day. That could be also an indication of a proper physical exercise. Checking on your diabetes, and here is the symbol, the icon. We want patients not to be diabetic because we know it accelerates the cardiovascular disease with therefore a greater risk of the clogging in the pipes in our heart. We need to fight obesity. We know obesity is related to height and weight. So we want BMI to be close to 25. And if it's over 30, then there is a greater risk of having a CVD. And therefore, we are interested in knowing what we eat, what we that kind of calories that we might be spending, and we want to have a good, as Santiago Monica Hall would say, then less expenditure and less food. And cholesterol is important. We want the lower cholesterol to be below 200. But the important thing here is the LED cholesterol, the bad cholesterol. And depending on the individual levels, the greater the risk, the greater the checks on this bad cholesterol. Then controlling blood pressure. I know Marseille has tested the blood pressure on you. You know it's important to uh, control blood pressure. You know that it should the uh, top at 135 and the minimum at 85. Of course, no smoking, that's, this is key. And with these lives eight essential, according to the American Cardiology Association, we will improve our risk degree to have a cardiovascular disease. On a comprehensive approach for OA, first we will need to properly um, have the patient aware and also the relatives to prevent risk factors, preventing some type of sports such as football or running on hard pavement, using proper shoes, using cane if required, no stairs if possible, then Tai Chi and yoga. I know that it's been mentioned and you are a strong promoter of this activity. Well, it is very much indicated for these patients. And then aligning joints, strengthening muscles, and that's important, strengthening muscles around the knee and for patients with OA. And then rapid treatments, usually these are painkillers and anti-inflammatory drugs. We know that anti-inflammatories for patients with a CVD are, is not something that we like much because they tend to a greater risk of high blood pressure and saline retention and a greater risk of a kidney worsening. And therefore, if they have a CVD, that's not something that we want. And we would rather use some other type of painkillers or even an increased physical exercise in order to strengthen the muscles. Another important element are the treatment or slow treatments for symptoms, as known as CISATOS, as for symptomatic slow action drugs for OA, among them tiazerine. And here you can use this type of drugs in order to treat patients with OA. Then we will talk about some aspects of drugs that could modify the evolution of the condition, and then the surgical treatment, that would be a prosthesis. But then patients with that improve on their CVD because they walk more, they have less pain, they lower their weight, and then there is improve on the outcomes. So based on a greater or lesser risk for a cardiovascular risk, there will be a series of medications that will be more recommended. And then we will try and I mean, the use of NSAIDs uh, orally. We might use them on skin, but let's not lose sight. If, you, if we are using too high intensity NSAIDs, this may lead to some damage on the digestive tract. Uh, then 
the cisaterans and painkillers can be used for any types of patients. On disease modifying drugs, and here this is related to what I was telling you at first, that the joint is an organ. Well, there are a series of ongoing trials with several molecules, some of them looking onto the cartilage to protect it, some others that aim to decrease the inflammation of the synovial membrane, and then some others with biphosphonates membranes and vitamins, sorry, and with polyte hormone, or in order to improve the subchondral bone remodeling that will be researched and in coming years we'll get to know if these more specific treatments for pathologies of the joint will have an impact when, in co when it comes to improving the prognosis. We all know that glucosamine is a drug that improves the prognosis for patients that are athletes. Indeed, athletes that use this type of drugs have a less risk to have osteoarthritis. And in recent years, we have seen some papers that have caused quite a shock. That, uh, and that have led to a surge in the expectations because it's been seen that both the use of glucosamine and chondroitin sulfate is related, according to some trials and for some samples of patients, to a 27% reduction in mortality and even 58% reduction in deaths from cardiovascular causes, which apparently is related to acetylation pathways that may lead to a greater presence of the kappa beta nuclear factor, which relates to greater complications at joint level because of a greater decay. There have also been a couple of interesting papers for a population with a myocardial infarction, and when compared these to people with the same age, same sex and same risk factors, well, it's been seen that patients that were new users to chondroitin sulfate would have a less risk of a CVD regardless of whether they were using NSAIDs or not, and also regardless of their age and sex. So. The, that could be a first stage towards an hypothesis and then for randomized controlled trials that this would eventually prove that the use of these drugs, and it would make sense because they have, they have led to a decrease of this chronic inflammation, which is more rooted, so to have a lesser risk of an myocardial infarction or stroke. A recent study did the same thing. They looked into database of patients that had underwent a stroke and compared these to people same age, same sex, same risk factors. And in this instance, it was seen that the use of chondroitin sulfate and glucosamine was related to a lower risk of having a cardiovascular event and also regardless of gender, age or the use of NSAIDs. But also interestingly, some of the drugs we use in cardiology for cardiac insufficiency or high blood pressure or for instance ischemic cardiopathy or chest angina, for instance, through several pathways on the ion channels, it may have an impact on the follow-up of the arthrosis and the involvement of the joint. And to conclude, 
I'd like to resort to this slide where, again, I've been telling you that both the joint and the heart should be seen as organs, that when the joint has a condition, you may have arthritis, and when you have the heart in sickening, you get a cardiovascular event, and that there is a relationship between the joint health and the cardiovascular health. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Dr. Freysha. Thank you for this outstanding presentation. Maria Teresa, how are you doing? Doing fine. Tell us uh, about yourself. You have osteoarthritis? Yes, yes, I'm a patient to Dr. Verges. I've been having arthritis in my hands, hips, knees, my backbone. But thanks to his prescriptions and his expertise, I'm now on Chondrosan for three years. That's an anti-inflammatory with no risk. This is one of these isotopes, isn't it? Yes. And I can lead a life, now that I'm 82, more or less normal. I can go shopping, I can do the cooking, I can do my things, and I feel like almost good. Yes, I've seen you walking up the stairs and moving around with no issues. Yes, I've seen that the doctor was saying that going up the stairs. Oh, okay, so it's going down the stairs. Well, I live in, in, an in a penthouse with many stairs, and I force myself to go down the stairs every now and then, but I manage with a cane, with a walking stick. Yes, as a matter of fact, if you are able to strengthen the muscles around the joint, the joint will suffer less and this increase in the strength and in the muscles around will protect you. Yes, and when I'm x-rayed at San Pao Hospital, and that's been for years, they always tell me, no, you will not go to the operating theater because you're keeping your femur straight and so, yes. Please, uh, no need to operate, and uh, no replacements, no prosthesis. So, she's uh, a case story for the success of medicine. And how's your heart? Yes, fine, I'm fine. So, no need to ask for an appointment. No, no, um, no symptoms. So, an ECR scan? Yeah, usually no problems. Of course, I get tired because of my age. Well, we all get tired. I do myself get tired. Yes, I guess it's the normal. So, the, I, I guess that the you've been having arthritis for longer, but then there's been a before and after, in after Verges, after Doctor Verges. So. This is Dr. Verges, Maria Teresa. They are more guarding angels. Uh, and I haven't lost hope in knowing that, well, I have hope in knowing if something aggravates, I can be infiltrated and I'll have peace of mind and with no pain. I guess that Dr. Verges wants to join us in here. Yes, first of all, Roman, thank you very much for your great presentation. And with these paradigms of CVDs and arthritis, and thank you very much for your testimony. Uh, I always say that there are no good doctors, but rather good patients. This is something I learned from a mentor of mine, and you're a good patient, because I remember when I visited you, for first, I mean, the first visit was a good one, uh, as it should be, but then you also went through some rehabilitation, you lost some weight, 
I think you had a slight high blood pressure and in 1992 when I was at the hospital we published that the, the candomethacin would rise by 5 millimeters blood pressure. So that's back in 1992. So these anti-inflammatory drugs, which are great drugs, but we need to be careful when used chronically. Arthritis is a chronic condition. It's not an acute condition, so it stays for life. And in her case, there wasn't much treatment options, so I decided to use chondroitin sulfate. And this is a drug where, in our experience, it doesn't work for everyone. I would say that 70% efficiency, mostly in patients with an intermediate or, or early arthritis. In then, for the advanced stages, it's more difficult, as we have said these days. But in her case, she being an HBP patient, it wouldn't make much sense. So, considering the data provided by Dr. Pamia and the reduction of cardiovascular disease, now this is important. In Spain, we estimate 2,000 deaths per year because of anti-inflammatory drugs. Now, 2,000, 2,000 deaths per anti-inflammatory drugs. Some patients are even using two or three of them a day, maybe because they get confused or whatever. And before COVID, accordingly, it's 16,000 deaths per year because of anti-inflammatory. And I've, it wasn't that rare to see an emergency case of a stroke due to anti-inflammatory drugs when I was in the States. And we know that the data we used to have here at the clinic, that was the second reason for renal transplant. Well, it was anti-inflammatory drugs. And so I think this is important, what we've shown here. Because first, we need to look at the cardiovascular risk of a given patient, which is often unassessed, maybe because of lack of time by the doctor, and then applying the right treatment. So. Thank you very much, and uh, it's a pleasure to see you. And it's not that we agreed beforehand, but no, I will pay you for your lunch now. <laughs> a, a question for the doctor on this motto, move against arthritis. So what's your take oh, as a cardiologist? Because we always say people, even if it causes you pain, move. So what's your take on that? Yes, I'm for that as well, to move against arthritis and to improve on your cardiovascular health. So we're going together because these two organs have a close relationship. They share many mechanisms, and what's good for one, it's good for the other. So right on that. Spot on. Yep. Thank you.